I'm Denise. She's a non-fiction editor. And I'm Louise. She's a fiction editor. And together, we're the Editing Podcast. Hello again and welcome to another episode of the Editing Podcast. So this week we're going to chat about seven ways you can speed up the payment process for editing and proofreading work. Now we should say at the top that whether or the extent to which you'll be able to deploy any of these methods will depend to a large extent on what kind of clients you're working with. That's definitely true. So back in the day when I worked for publishers and packages, it was they who decided when I was going to be paid. Whereas with indie authors, I've had a lot more control. Yeah, it's exactly the same for me. But even with clients whose accounts departments are running the show, there are still things that we can do to make sure that the process is as efficient as possible. Okay, then. Well, why don't we start with that? Because publishers and packages are an important part of our market. So what would you advise, Denise? So my advice is don't hang around. Get your invoice in as soon as the work has been delivered. Now, it may well be that the organisation deals with invoices at the same time every month, but if you miss that window because it's not aligned with yours, you could be adding up to four, even more weeks to the payment schedule, depending what their payment cycle is. That's a really Um, good point. And that's just unnecessary. (laughs) It's totally unnecessary. I've got a client, it's 45 days payment cycle and if you miss it you know you're waiting nearly three months yeah yeah. which you know if you just miss it at the beginning so that's not good and that means that that money's sitting in their bank account rather than yours absolutely which is not the plan really is it yeah (laughs) but having said that let's let's just go back a step because one way that payments can end up being delayed is because there's confusion about what the terms were And so the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that the scope of the job is laid out clearly right from the start. Absolutely. So the invoice shouldn't come as a surprise, should it? No. Make sure that your agreement outlines the, the, the scope of the job, the, the type of editing service, the, the agreed upon fee, the expected date of receipt of the work from your client and the delivery date of the completed project from you. Yeah, and include and specify your payment terms too, such as when the invoice will be issued and when the payment will be due. And by setting out your expectations from the beginning, you reduce the likelihood of misunderstandings and delays later. Yeah. So another step that you can take, regardless of which type of client you're working for, is to make sure that you've got a process in place. A process, definitely. (laughs) (laughs) Because there's nothing more likely to delay payment than an invoice that doesn't look like an invoice (laughs) or that's missing the crucial information. Yeah, yeah. So what does your invoice need to include? Well, it's not a million miles from the information that you should have included in your original agreement with your client. It should state what type of editing services you've provided and the name of the project. And the agreed rate for the job, any additional charges and the total amount due. And make the payment methods clear too. Making the client hunt around for these can cause frustrations and with frustrations come delays. We need to make paying us as easy as possible. Yeah, definitely. And don't forget to include um, payment terms. So when the payment is due, and this could be upon receipt of your invoice or within 15 days or some other agreed time frame. Yeah, and the key phrase there is agreed, isn't it? Because Mm. as we were just talking about just now, that invoice isn't a place for surprises. Your client and you should have agreed the fee and the terms well before the invoice hit their inbox. Definitely. And and it's good practice, even a legal necessity in some jurisdictions, to include the client's name and address. So make sure that you have that before you even start the work. Then it will be ready to include in your invoice. Definitely. And the payment methods um, or method uh, should be clear too. And that might mean including bank tra- bank transfers, um, information or other details, depending on your process. Yeah. So another option you might consider for some client types is the inclusion of an incentive. Yeah, so that might mean offering a small percentage discount if they settle up with uh, within a certain time frame. Um, you could even tier the structure so that the sooner they settle, the more they save. Or you could offer a discount coupon for the next piece of work you do for them. The thing about this approach is it doesn't just motivate the client to prioritise your invoice, it also just demonstrates to them that you're flexible. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good I've, point. I've never done that myself. Have you? Nor have I. Nor have I. <laughs> I, I, I know people who it. do it, which yeah. is, you know, which is, <laughs> I know that's why we wanted to chat about it. But yeah, um, and you know, again, it's kind of one of those things that I think it depends on 
what kind of clients you're working for definitely and yeah it doesn't, certainly doesn't them. really fit with my, maybe if you've got clients that are doing big series and you can anticipate things I don't know yeah but, but yeah. yeah it's an interesting one yeah so another um way to speed things up is to use online payment platforms such as PayPal or Stripe and because these payment gateways are established and trusted they give the client confidence and they're convenient too because a lot of people already have those accounts and that means they don't have to go through the faff of putting in payment details because all of that stuff's already set up. Yeah, I mean, I use Stripe for a lot of US-based clients because setting up direct international bank trans transfers doesn't always seem to be that uh, as easy for them no. as it is for me. Mm. And and using a known gateway takes all the stress out of it. And even though I lose a small percentage in fees, I don't mind because it's cost of business. It just makes my life easier. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing it does is that all the conversions are done automatically. So yeah. if you're billing in sterling or euros, but your client's paying in Canadian or US dollars, they don't have to faff about with this exchange rates either. Yeah, it's way more transparent. Yeah. So another option is to ask for a deposit. Now, what you call it is up to you. You might call it a booking fee or, or a partial payment or an installment plan or a deposit. But the aim is the same, to mitigate the risk of late or non-payment. Yeah, and this is especially worthwhile for large projects. It gives you a financial buffer and it demonstrates the client's commitment to the project. And if their final payment is late, it means that not all of it is late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so less of a hit on your cash flow. And and again, something like this needs to be clearly communicated up front in the initial terms so that everyone's on the same page. Yeah, and I think one of the key things about terms that needs to be communicated is whether or not it's refundable because yes. that's often yes. where things yeah, yeah, yeah. hit the buffers a little bit with deposits. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if they're b blocking off your time, then it should be non-refundable. Non non-refundable. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, there's always leeway in these things, but it's definitely something that you need to, um, to, to think carefully about. Yeah. So the final option we're going to suggest is a good one if you're the type of editor who works on substantial editing projects that are likely to take many months. That's right. So it's a progressive invoicing model. Instead of invoicing for the entire project upon completion, you break down the payment into project phases. And that means that you get a percentage of the total fee each time you reach a milestone. And again, this is a way of managing your cash flow. But it also allows your client to make smaller, more manageable payments at different stages. Yeah, because nobody likes being hit with enormous bills. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the one thing I would say about progressive invoicing is don't wait for your client to offer it. You can ask a client if they would be willing to do it. Um, sometimes I have a project that I know is going to last months and they just say mm -hmm. this is what the project fee is going to be and the suggestion is going to be that you'll invoice for that you know six months down the line and then wait another 30 days or 45 days or whatever before you get paid so you've got none of that money coming in and I've never been told that I can't have staged invoices um, when I've asked if it's a possibility as long as it's all clear and you know what to expect when, it shouldn't be a problem. And exactly. I mean, you don't ask, you don't get. Nobody's exactly. going to nobody's going to be angry that you asked mm. for a way to make life easier for both of you. You know. Exactly. And and yeah. if it doesn't work some for someone's system or process or for whatever reason, they can explain that and that's fine. You've had yeah. the conversation. Yeah. So that's it from us. We hope you'll find at least some of these approaches useful in your own editing business. Thank you once again for listening. And if you'd like to help support the editing podcast, we've got a couple of options for you. The first is that you can tip us with a one-off donation of your choosing. Or you can join our Patreon community. All our patrons get exclusive access to a huge batch of transcripts. And the links for both of these options are in the show notes. In the show notes? <laughs> <laughs> Those two. Oh, yeah, then. On that bombshell. <laughs> she's been Denise. <laughs> and she's been Louise. <laughs> Join us again next time. Bye. Bye.